Hey everybody, in this episode, we are making the stack for the train. So I'm starting in my train folder that's already shared and I'm hitting create and document. I'm gonna call this stack and put your initials on there. Hit okay. And we're gonna do this similar to the pegs where we are going to make a profile of half of it and so we can revolve it around. So if you haven't done one of the pegs yet, you can follow along with this. Here we go. I'm starting to start with a sketch and I'm gonna click on the front plane here and swing it around for my front view. I'm gonna grab a, um, a line and I'm going to do, again, the profile, which is like the front view, but I'm only going to do half of it. So I'm going to go straight up and I'm not really paying attention to dimensions quite yet. I'm going to go uh, straight across to the right. I'm going to kind of do this like angle here and I'm going to angle it down, not all the way to the bottom, but slightly above that um, horizontal X axis and then go down to the X axis so that I can come back to the origin and close it up. And you know it's closed up when you've got this little gray, grayed out area. Uh, one more thing I wanna add is, uh, I'm gonna stay with my line tool and I'm gonna click here and go straight up again. The height there doesn't matter and go ahead and hit escape on your keyboard. So you should have something that looks like this. Let's start adding some dimensions on here. So I click this or D for dimension and I'm going to grab my vertical line, my longest line, and make that 1.75. And it makes it slightly smaller. Using your mouse to zoom in, zoom out makes a world of difference. Um, let's go ahead and grab this point right here and this bottom line here and do the dimension for that, which is 1.5 for the height. And then you can do this height right here, which is 0.25. All right, so I think all the heights are taken care of. Um, now, not only can you do vertical lines and horizontal lines for dimensions, but you can also do angles. So I'm still in my dimension and zooming in here, I'm going to click on this blue line and then I'm gonna click on this blue line and I'm gonna go up to the left just slightly and make this uh, 15 degrees. There we go. All right, so now let's start working on the width of the um, profile. I'm gonna start. Um, I'm gonna start right here. I think yeah. Start on this point here and click on this vertical line. Go up with it, and I want that to be uh, the direction. Say it's 1.25, but we got to remember that that is the diameter of a circle, and we only want half of that. So we want 1.5 divided by two. Okay. Um, then I want to click on this bottom horizontal line and make that 0.5 again divided by 2. Um, am I missing anything? I think I'm good to go. And hit my green checkbox and revolve this. Click the profile that you want to revolve and then click the revolve axis, which is this vertical line that you want to revolve it on, and hit the green checkbox. And when I change this over to isometric that looks mwah. okay um almost there so let's add a sketch here on the top so i'm going to hit sketch and i'm going to click on the top and i'm going to i want to put a dot there have a grab a point put it right there on the origin of the top okay because what i'm going to do next is uh, something that my class doesn't have a lot of practice in. And I'm gonna close that sketch and I'm gonna grab what's called the hole tool. So I'm gonna click on hole and I'm gonna click on that dot right there. Now, yours might've defaulted to a simple hole, which is like taking one simple drill bit, a uh, common drill bit, just going through it. Um, you have an example of a counter bore and you have a counter sink. Okay, countersink is kind of like the sink in your bathroom. It is angled to go down to the drain. A counter bore is what we're looking for. So you can see um, if you've ever used a counter bore drill bit, you can see that uh, you have a larger drill bit here going into a smaller area there. So we need to know those dimensions. So the, um, let's see here, the large 
diameter. Uh, yeah, so the small diameter, this very top one, is 0.375. Um, the larger diameter is 0.875. Then when we start getting into the depths of the hole, uh, the, this top section right here, so like this top section of the depth of it, is 0.375. And then the depth from the top, oh, you can see going there, if I kind of hover over it, um, is 1.5. And if I hit that green checkbox, it looks like that. And if you hit your top view, you can see you don't go all the way through. Maybe a better way to do that is to look from the bottom. You see it doesn't go all the way through. Um, the One of the last things, we're almost done, everybody, is you want to add a chamfer. So again, zooming in, grabbing the chamfer, uh, we want to do a distance and angle. We want the distance to be 0.01. We want the angle to be 45, and then you want to click on this bottom. If you hover over, it should highlight, I think. It's doing it for mine anyway. should do it for yours too. So I click on that. I hit the green checkbox, and you can see it's now chamfered there. Um, and we are almost done. I'm, I'm moving my picture out of the way because I want to right-click on this part. I want to assign the material to ABS plastic because that's what we have in our classroom. For our 3D printer, we click on that. We, it now gives us a density of it and, um, and now we're done. Now, I wanna start encouraging my kids to customize their train parts. Um, I'm a Purdue fan, so what I like to do is I like to change the colors to black and gold. So we can easily do that by like highlighting it, right click on, on it, and then edit your appearance. And let's let's change that to like some gold, some gold colors. All right, I'm, I'm making a Purdue train. You can make whatever kind of train you want. Boiler up. Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.